Hi there! Today I'm going to show you how I painted this watercolor of two bluebirds. I have bluebirds at my house year-round and right now they're so busy getting ready for baby bluebirds. I hope you enjoy watching me paint them. So for this painting I decided to do kind of a loose and abstracty background with no firm plan before I began. First I wet the paper covering all of the background areas but carefully leaving the birds in the main branches dry. Once the paper was all wet, it was time to add color and I started with some blue at the top to suggest views of the sky. And for the entire background, I'm using a trio of just Tansy Yellow Deep, Cobalt Blue, and Joe's Red. Before getting started, I made three puddles on my palette's mixing area, one for each color, and then I also pre-mixed a bit of the yellow and blue since I knew I was going to be using a good bit of green and that saved me time while I was painting. And as I mentioned, I wasn't really sure where I was going with it, and that's a fun way to do a loose background. Um, I was doing lots of blues and greens, and then when I added some lavender, I thought it was pretty, so I just kept adding more. And at one point, I also used a toothbrush to splatter a little bit of clean water to add some extra texture. So I paused the video for a few minutes and dried the paper. And now I've started another layer on top of the one I just painted and dried. When layering washes, the previous wash needs to be completely dry before you put the next one on top or you'll end up disturbing or even removing paint from the previous layer. And what you see me doing here is very similar to the way I did the first layer, but I'm being more selective. Instead of wetting and painting the entire background, I'm only doing a few spots where I'd like more paint. And I also used the toothbrush for a little splatter and a paper towel and a few spots for blotting. And I dried the paper again and now I'm using a pencil to lay in some ideas of where I might like to suggest some details. Maybe a few leaves, a stem or two, perhaps some flowers over there. Really just looking at what's there and thinking of what I can do with it. And then I started painting again using two brushes, one for paint and one for clean water. I'm applying the paint where I want it and then using my pencil as a rough guide and then using the brush that only has water to blend out the edges that I want to disappear. I'm using positive and negative painting here. Negative painting is when you create an object by painting the space around the object, such as the way I did the three leafy shapes in the lower left area of the painting. Now, preparing to paint the birds, I'm going to soften a few edges. The wet and wet washes around the birds and branches created some spots where more pigment settled along the edges, which can create the look of having a dark outline around an object. I wanted nice soft edges around the birds, so I used a small brush with clean water, wetting around the dark edges, then blotting them with a Viva paper towel. Uh, that's a good time to refine the placement of any edges as needed also, and you may have noticed me doing that a little as I went. And then on dry paper, I sketched out some details for the next step. And now it's time to start on the birds. I started with the male bluebird's orange breast, and since I'm planning on doing a good bit of blending, I'm using two brushes again, one for paint and one for clean water. I paint the color on first, and then use the water in the second brush to blend where I want soft edges. I also use that brush for lifting some lights out. Uh, blotting most of the water out of that brush and then pulling it through areas that are still wet and it lifts some of the pigment out when you do that. The female has a much lighter and less orange breast. And then the same thing with a nice cobalt blue, painting it onto dry paper with one brush and using a second brush with clean water to blend where I want soft edges. Female Bluebird has more semi-neutral blues and grays on her head, back, wings, and tails, so I used cobalt blue and burnt sienna to make a gray for her. And before I started on her, I had one puddle ready and 
with the mixing area of my palette that's a blend of those two colors and then a second puddle that's just cobalt blue. And I'm alternating between the two to paint her head, back, and tail. For this layer that I've just made on the two birds, I've only painted on their lightest values and I'm doing the same with the branches here. So I've established what areas are going to stay white and what areas will be what colors and I'll use the subsequent layers to add the middle and dark values which is when they get their depth and texture. And for the branches here I'm also using two puddles, one with a mixture of transparent red oxide and ultramarine blue and the other is just ultramarine blue and I'm using two different brushes for them so I can switch back and forth between them easily. Uh, painting the warmer mixture on then dropping in the cooler hues, especially on the kind of shadowy side of the branches. So now I've started back on painting the next layer on the birds, starting with their breasts again. And really I'm using the same techniques that I did on the first layer. Uh, painting the color on, using a brush with clean water to blend, using the same brush to lift, and just using those techniques to create mid-range values and the look of textured feathery breasts and bellies. And I use basically the same process again to paint their heads, backs, wings, and tails. But since my lightest values are already there from the first layer I did, I can use this layer to put on lots of variation. The look of feathers, shadows, and form. a couple of darker mixtures to do his eye, beak, and legs, the more darks on his feathers and tail and such. By the way, I used a little dot of masking fluid before I started the video to reserve a little white highlight on each of their eyes. In the end, I forgot to remove the masking fluid before I stopped recording, but I wanted to note that where you can see the little highlight on his eye, no, I did not paint around it, there is a tiny dot of masking fluid there. For most of these darks here, I'm using a combination of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And um, that's Daniel Smith's burnt sienna, which pigment is used for burnt sienna varies among brands. There are, are a lot of colors like that, but particularly burnt sienna. And you got my head getting in the way there. I love the part of painting birds or other creatures when you paint their eyes. Suddenly they seem to have life and character. Like one moment it's just some colors on the paper and the next moment there's somebody there. I probably shouldn't admit this, but sometimes I can't help but say, hello. A little bit of dry brush there. There isn't a lot of um, liquid in my brush at all when I was doing those final um, textured bits on his breast. And the more I do on his eye, the more he comes to life. to the female the same mixtures as I used in the first layer, uh, just making them darker values than before. Painting, blending, lifting, repeat, and uh, those colors I mentioned were cobalt blue and burnt sienna. using shadows to create shapes. Giving her more defined feathers. She's 
just needs some more character around her eye. I'm sure I'll get to that in a minute. you also see me using a paper towel along with my wet brush. The one that's wet with only clean water. And I'll use that to kind of lift and blot a little bit of paint. There we go. Yeah, she really has a face now. darker and darker values all over her, using them to create the form of her body and shapes of her features. It's time to paint some darker values on the branches. Getting near the end, and I'm just kind of mimicking the patterns and textures of bark and making shadows to give the branches form. And again, I'm using one brush for the darkish brown mixture that I made out of transparent red oxide and ultramarine blue, and another just for ultramarine blue. Just thinking about where the shadows would be, um, especially including under the birds. After this, it'll just be some final touches. Um, first, adding some more darks where needed, and then looking the birds over and deciding if I'm happy with them. I decided that Mrs. Bluebird could use a bit more blue on her shoulder and more work on her beak. I love how bluebirds and other thrushes always look like they have a bit of a frown. Like, maybe they're kind of grumpy or just so serious. I think bluebirds are serious birds. The ones at my house are. Serious about making baby bluebirds. <laughs> and signature, and it's done. So there you have it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up to let me know that you liked it and you'd like me to make more videos. Or you can also send me a message, comment, follow me somewhere. You know, thanks for watching.